Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be chatting through my most worn items for autumn. I'm sure many of you are already familiar with this format on my channel here so I'm just going to dive right into it. And I thought because it is more for the transitional season I would start with outerwear uh, just to mix things up because my tops are generally always the same. So I actually had two most worn jackets over the autumn. I found that it was really really mild here in Sydney so I was reaching for things that were lighter weight and it actually wasn't until the tail end of autumn that I was even sort of starting to get these into rotation so they didn't really get as much wear as I would have anticipated. So the two jackets that I tied for equal most worn in autumn were my Nilby P trench coat this is in a navy nylon and you will recall if you've been watching sort of my videos and I did a wishlist video I said that a navy nylon uh, trench was actually on my wishlist it was something I really wanted to add to my wardrobe for the season this one was gifted to me from W Concept but it was actually the one that I had been thinking about buying myself and I'm really really happy with it. I had been looking at an alternative one from Camilla and Mark but it was just a very very different texture, a lot more lightweight. This one has a lot more heft to it. You can see that the nylon almost has a bit of structure. It is double line too which means that it has a really nice weight to it and I think that gives it a beautiful drape when it is being worn. Uh, but yeah this has been a really really lovely piece to have in my closet and also a really versatile one. I find that navy is a really good option if you want to go for a high contrast outfit but you want something that isn't going to be too harsh around your face. Navy's a little bit softer than black so for that reason I really like it and yeah it's been a brilliant little addition to my wardrobe and definitely one that I found myself reaching for over the winter as well. As I said it, it's a very very mild climate here in Sydney so our winters you, you don't even really need to wear a jacket most days. I think it's 20 degrees a day that I'm filming this if that gives you any indication. My other most worn jacket was a lighter weight one. This is a denim jacket from Series Life. It is super oversized and it has this almost acid wash-esque effect to the denim so it's very sort of bleached out and it feels like the kind of thing you throw on a lot over the sort of warmer months uh, but I found that this was a great way to actually add a little bit of a casual element to many of my outfits as I've been continuing to sort of wear things that feel a bit more dressed up but in order to make it feel more appropriate and suitable for my lifestyle this has been a good little uh, bit to throw over the top. The denim is really nice and soft and you can kind of see it isn't too thick or heavy it doesn't feel too structured so for me that's one of the reasons I really like it I think in the past I've often found myself shying away from wearing my denim jackets because they are too rigid and they don't feel really lived in and that's sort of what I want from a denim jacket I have mine in the small medium and would say it fits true to size for an oversized fit next most worn item I want to mention is a piece of knitwear and I found myself gravitating towards cardigans a lot over autumn and I think that one this is due to the fact that I was pregnant for a large chunk of the season so I wanted knitwear that I wasn't going to stretch out but two it also acted like a jacket or that third piece of my outfit and being relatively warm I wanted to be able to remove that item quite easily so cardigans it was. The one that I ended up wearing the most is from Jenny Kane and this was another item that was gifted to me. Uh, this here is their cashmere cocoon cardigan. I have done a review on it. Now this is quite an expensive cardigan and I will say straight off the bat you don't have to spend this much money on a nice cashmere cardigan. Actually if you live in the US Quince do a really good alternative. It's not as it's not quite as plush as this and the fit is different but I think it'll give you a similar sort of a vibe and it is much more affordable and wallet friendly. I think it's around the 100 US dollar mark. Uh, whereas this one is, I believe it's 445 US dollars. But I do have a discount code for 15% off, which is Jamie Lee 15 if you have been thinking about buying any clothing from the brand. Uh, but yeah, I did just want to throw that out there because I know some of the items I share are a little bit more expensive and I do want to share some more budget friendly options as well uh, but yeah the quality of it is really really nice the fit reminds me a lot of a two sir with love cardigan that I have uh, which I have in a medium and that one is really sort of boxy and oversized and it's so snuggly and something that is really cozy to wear in the colder months I have currently got that one tucked away in storage the only difference really is the fact that this one doesn't have pockets on the front which is fine uh, it's really warm you will get pilling with it as you will with any kind of cashmere knit generally it will shed once or twice um, I definitely have to run a cashmere comb over the front of mine as I've noticed a little bit of pilling on the front and also just on the sleeves where it rubs against my body uh, but I think 
otherwise it's a really beautiful cardigan and if you have the budget and you've been thinking about buying it I don't think that you can go wrong I have worn mine so much not just through autumn but it's been one that I've continued to reach for a lot uh, throughout the winter as well then my most worn top, zero surprises, it was a t-shirt. I think it's a t-shirt every single season, maybe a tank in the spring and summer months, but the one that I ended up wearing the most, I think I've mentioned this one before, is my redone, I think this is called their classic tee. This is the black one. I also have it in the white as well, uh, and I alternate between the two. It's really lovely, sort of has that lived-in feel, which I like to the fabric, so it is really nice to wear but it's a nice slim fitting t-shirt so it kind of skims the body in a really beautiful way but it isn't too baggy and oversized because I know that look is not for everyone and I also like the fact that it's got the little capped sleeves so it does expose a lot of your arms now I've had mine for I'm gonna say maybe five years so a really really long time I have actually done a whole video on the best basic t-shirts I'm gonna link it up in the cards if you want to go and watch and essentially my conclusion after doing that video and wearing those t-shirts for months and months and months was that you do not need to spend a lot of money on a great t-shirt Uniqlo do really good t-shirts I can't do really good t-shirts I'll link those below if you do have the budget and you want to spend a little bit more these are nice and you can kind of see they've been one of those core pieces in my wardrobe for many years and if you look after your t-shirts well then you will have them for a long time i have noticed just like with my white one that there is a small hole someone had suggested to me uh, that it could be from the button on my jeans however this hole is actually higher up it's sort of here around my waist which isn't an area where I've had any sort of friction against the t-shirt so I'm just thinking it's general wear and tear but I think to have a t-shirt like this for five years and wear it loads is pretty good actually and I'm gonna continue to wear it I'm just gonna stitch up the hole and act like it was never there so I have that in a size small as well for anyone wondering and I would say that they fit pretty true to size. Next item on the agenda is my most worn skirt and it is this really cute little skirt from Cezanne. This is called their Carolina skirt and it is just so sweet and flirty. I love the ruffle detail on the front which kind of crosses over and creates a little bit of interest even though it is quite subtle because at least the one I have is a much darker print. Um, micro florals are something that never really go out of fashion or style. They come back every single year and being a black based print I like that. It's something I can wear in the winter too with a pair of tights. Um, I actually wore this a lot with the denim jacket and I just wear a loose tee and I thought that that was a cute little combination. I have mine in the size 36. If you do want to see another way that I would wear this, I did talk about this in my recent Cezanne brand review video. Again, I will link that up in the cards where I kind of share my thoughts on some of the hero pieces that the brand does every single season. So a good one if you've been thinking about buying anything from them. But I think the quality of it has been really, really nice and I've worn it loads and it's really just kind of held up uh, and actually also was a great one to wear when I was pregnant too because it did fit over the bump for a lot of it and didn't feel too short or didn't make me feel too immodest so that was my most worn skirt then I'm gonna pop shorts and pants together as one category because there was one brand of item that I wore and one was the shorts version one was the pants version and they are both from Commando so they are their bike shorts and then also the leggings um, in the cutaways you'll get a better sense of what they look like on Honestly, these are now something that I really can't be without in my wardrobe. I think that they are so brilliant and I've been so thrilled with the quality, the way that they fit. Uh, I just find that they feel really flattering on and they also kind of suck you in as well because they've got this tummy control effect uh, around the waist, which was great, especially in that initial postpartum period and probably one of the reasons why I wore them so much. But I have found myself kind of leaning into a little bit more of a casual style over the last couple of years and wearing something like the bike shorts with an oversized t-shirt and then maybe a shirt open over the top or with a jacket has been great or even just a big chunky knit. And then with the leggings, something that I really like to wear when it's cold, just with a really big oversized knit and some boots. And yeah, I do think of the two fabrics. So the shorts I have in neoprene, the leggings I have in the original um, stretch cotton. I prefer the neoprene because it doesn't actually pick up any lint or fluff, whereas the cotton stretch ones do. And I always have to lint roller them, whereas the neoprene ones I don't have to. And they don't 
feel like an overly sort of scuba type material so that is those I have both of them in a size small and I would say that they fit true to size then finally we're just gonna run through oh jeans and then we'll do accessories so my most worn jeans are actually the ones I'm wearing right now and you'll get a better look at them in the cutaways but I have them in a few colors so I thought I would share a different color and they are the Everlane original cheeky jean so this is basically the cheeky jean 2.0 the version with elastane. Not the 90s version which is rigid and made from 100% cotton. These have stretch to them. And I have to say I really like what they've done with the fit. It's slightly different. I feel like they're cut slightly straighter through the leg and there's just a little bit more room around the waist but they sort of suck you in in a nice way as well. And I will say the denim does give ever so slightly once you've worn them all day and they sort of stay that way until you've washed them and then they sort of shrink back in a little bit again. Now I have these in my true size which is a 26 and I get them in the cropped length because I do have a shorter inseam. Um, this is the canvas or is it ecru color can't remember but this one is sort of a yellow toned cream which i think is coming off pretty clear on camera and then i'm wearing the original kind of i think these are called washed midnight but it's a medium blue they just fit really nicely and they're so comfortable they're so stretchy they don't really i don't find that they kind of bag out or anything i'm just so happy with these jeans and the cheeky style will forever be one of my favorites i think it is a great option if you have been trying to transition away from skinny jeans but aren't quite ready to go to a full straight leg jean yet they're a good in-betweener but just a great everyday jean it's i i'd say i guess it's uh Evelyn's take on a mum jean so that's my most worn pair of denim. And then accessories, we'll mention my bag. Most worn bag was my Quince camera crossbody bag. I think this was my most worn bag of the summer as well, maybe, or spring. I can't remember. But it is one that I do tend to continue to reach for a lot because it is a very convenient size. The quality of the leather is exceptional, especially given the price, under 100 US uh, dollars. These types of bags, I think, are a really a good classic staple. I mean... I think especially around the time that the Gucci Soho Disco was the trending bag or the it bag of the moment, uh, I feel like I started to see a lot more brands come out with that style. And yeah, it's, it's classic for a reason. It fits all of your essentials. Uh, the inside is a sort of canvas cotton twill. I will say that my bag isn't perfectly shaped anymore. I mean, I haven't really babied this at all. I've been really impressed with how robust the leather is in the mock rock version it does come in a pebbled leather too which i did buy one of those for a girlfriend for her birthday and i know she loved hers so that's a brilliant little find and for anyone wondering how i got this to australia i use mail forwarding so i will link the service that i use i've been using them for close to two decades now so that i find them really reliable maybe not the cheapest mail forwarding service out there but uh, they've never ever steered me wrong and then to end things with my most worn shoes which were a pair of ballet flats and they are the dream flats from Oliver Cabell. Mine are in such bad shape. I've actually worn a hole in the heel. I've worn these so much. It's a little bit embarrassing actually. So I don't really want to bring them too close up to camera, but I will show you how they look on in the cutaways. These are outrageously comfortable. You will not get a blister with these at all. Uh, I have worn these so much. I've worn them on days when I've done over 20,000 steps. I just, I can't rave about them enough. The leather is so nice and soft. Uh, just a really, really comfortable shoe. I do think the padding and the sole has sort of worn down over time, but I've worn them so much and you can kind of probably tell they have been very, very well loved. If I'm going out for a walk, I quite often like to put on a ballet flat over a sneaker just because it feels like it, it's part of my outfit as opposed to me putting on a sneaker just to wear for walking. So. That's kind of one of the reasons why I've worn them so, so much. My other most worn pair of shoes is a pair of sandals. I know it seems odd being a most worn for autumn. They're my YSL uh, tribute slides. Have I convinced you to buy these yet? Or at least a dupe? <laughs> I love these so much. Uh, they really are just a shoe that I find myself gravitating towards all the time, regardless of the season. As I said, it's currently 20 degrees here in Sydney and it is winter, so... That gives you a bit of a sense of the type of climate I live in and why something like this has been such a, a brilliant little addition to my wardrobe, despite being a bit more of a splurge-worthy piece. I have two pairs and I 
believe I got both of them on sale at least these ones maybe I got a 10% discount and then the latte ones I got I think I purchased for around 50% off when I was in New Zealand so they're great I did size up a full size to a 41 don't necessarily think I needed to do so for the leather version but for the patent version absolutely because otherwise they would have been too small and I do sometimes get the odd blister with both pairs so not a style I would wear if I was doing a really intense day of walking. So that is it my most worn items for autumn. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you're in the northern hemisphere I hope that this was helpful at least for your planning purposes. If you're in the southern hemisphere I would love to know what you have been reaching for a lot over the past few months. Tell me down in the comments comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, for spending some of your day with me, and I will see you next time with a brand new video. See you very soon. Bye!